We all have some story to tell. At least, we all have something to jot in a notebook or to detail around the dinner table. Life brings memories and embarrassments, accomplishments and tangents, and in my case, they all end up in the notes app on my phone. Welcome to Something to Know, a podcast dedicated to these scribbles of inspiration and facts for humanization. I'm your host, Ben Geezer. Each show, we attempt to get some story, set of experiences, or new outlooks on life off our chests, all centered around some central theme or topic. Think of private journal, but for the public to see, or hear. In the end, we hope to spark something for yourself to start taking note of. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of Something to Note, a podcast with the goal of sharing experiences, stories, and new outlooks on life to the audience with the hope of getting you, yes, you, to start taking note of things in your own lives. Because I think we all have a story to share. So this is kind of like to get your brain rolling. And also, these are kind of just stories I want to get out there that maybe you can have a connection to and be like, oh, my gosh, someone else thinks that. And I'm like, yes, we, I do. We all do because we're human and stuff. I don't know. That's the goal. And maybe at some point you would like to share. And I would love for this platform to start encouraging other stories. But right now we're starting out small because we're new. We're brand new. So brand new that last episode we talked about icebreakers. You know the thing that you do on the first day of anything or meeting people for the first time? Those dreaded things? They, <laughs> Well, those are the things I wanted to talk about because I feel like they're one of those things that we can all kind of dread and we can relate to, but I feel like they do show us something about ourselves that we can see in others. We can, you know, make connections through them, even if we do dread them. Maybe that's the connection, the fact that we all hate icebreakers. I don't know, something... Something to consider. But I wanted to talk about icebreakers. And last episode specifically, we talked about the stories we tell when like meeting people for the first time to try to break the ice. At least something I try to do is I try to find a simple, short, most likely self-deprecating story to lighten the mood when meeting people. Because I feel like as humans, we want to try to be relatable rather than put ourselves above others. Us being, you know, social animals who depend on cooperation and all. Or, you know, this could just be a Midwest thing of us not wanting to be bragging or putting ourselves above others. We're, we're very polite people. The Midwest, the Midwest is the best. <laughs> but for this episode, I wanted to continue the discussion of icebreakers. But specifically, I wanted to talk about a specific icebreaker question. A question I feel like is the worst icebreaker question anyone can get. It just stresses me out looking at it, what I have typed out on the script. And that is the question... Name something special about yourself. Worst question. Again, this might just be a Midwest thing, but just the idea of trying to find something to talk about yourself that's positive and unique can be difficult, I feel like, at least in front of other people. Well, and also especially like in middle school and like high school and maybe even college where you're like you're putting yourself in front of people and it's like, I don't really want to come off as too, too out there. I want to be with the group, but I also don't, just finding that balance. And anyways, name something special about yourself. It's just so much stress. So I wanted to talk about this question because fortunately for me, I was born with my own go-to answer. And no, it's not because I'm double-jointed. I'm also not double-jointed. But I do wish I was double-jointed because that is the default answer, especially in elementary school, middle school, maybe even high school, where you can just be like, name something special about yourself. Well, I'm double jointed and check this out. And then you do like a weird thing with your finger and then everyone's like, whoa, oh my gosh, look at his finger. Instantly cool. Instantly cool. I mean, that's like the one benefit of being double jointed. But if I had that, that'd be great. But no, I was born with something else I want to get into. <laughs> something else. <laughs> that came out weird. You'll see it in a second. But I do think if you are struggling with this question, name something special about yourself. I think I've figured out a new way to potentially answer it. And that is, if you can't name something special about yourself, why not name someone special to you or in your life? I know, I got a little cheesy, but I think it's something to consider. And I think it's also something nice. But keeping that all in mind, this brings me into the story for this episode I wanted to tell. And it is my answer to the dreaded question. And I'm calling the story Monkeys and Waffles. Take it away.
When I tell people I'm a twin, the same follow-up questions always come up. Question. Are you identical? Answer. No. She's my sister. Question. Do you ever switch clothes to confuse people? Answer. No. She's my sister. Though, technically, I did wear her bedazzled jeans one time in elementary school by accident. Somehow, I missed the floral patterns on the back pockets when I pulled it out of the hamper and just carried on my day. I don't think anyone noticed, except my confused mom when she picked this up later. I definitely didn't notice. But it would have explained my sudden feelings of empowerment and sass. You know, strutting to the dinosaur section of the library, demanding the blue scissors instead of the pink during arts and crafts, and taking no crap from Connor for saying I couldn't be Indiana Jones during recess. I was a strong, independent first grader. Question. Can you read each other's minds? Answer. Yes, actually. At least, we know the script to follow whenever asked this question without having to talk to each other beforehand. Something along the lines of, all right, on the count of three, say the first thing that pops into your head. We might then put our fingers to our temples, or we might throw in a few pauses to close our eyes in order to, quote unquote, focus our mental connection. Okay, one, two, three, monkeys. We might then appear to look shocked about the seeming coincidence, encouraging our audience to be just as shocked. Okay. One, two, three. Waffles. Being more than just a coincidence now, we would both look around and enjoy the faces of our quizzical friend groups. Now, I don't know for sure when we started repeating these lines whenever our untapped psychic powers became the topic of discussion. It was probably, though, when we were a lot younger, since the words monkeys and waffles have a better chance of bringing down the house when sitting on a swing set rather than when sitting on some bar stools. Still, a good bit is a good bit. The final likely question. Which one of you is older? Answer, Isabel is by eight minutes. As a twin, I've been sharing things even before I was born. Birthdays, for instance, could be a bit rough, especially with Isabel favoring chocolate and myself preferring vanilla. Thankfully, our mom was a great mediator. She'd get a marble cake. Of course, the strangest thing about being a twin is sharing the same stages of life as a sibling, the same grade level. When we were younger, like most brothers and sisters, we would do a lot together. We played on the same peewee soccer team, though we both only sat on the sidelines while we waited for the promised snacks afterward. We would hop between our childhood bedrooms, listening to the High School Musical and Shrek 2 soundtracks in one, and building pillow forts in the other. I even took a couple of years of dance classes with her, the results being my misplaced confidence with breakdancing and home movies like this where I slipped on my ballet shoes and danced with my teddy bear, twirling and singing with my sister by my side. I think you can agree. Pure, raw talent. With time, though, we began to separate our interests and hobbies, separate more into individuals. Dance for her would lead to volleyball, then girls on the run, then cross country in middle school and high school. She easily made lots of friends and strengthened her outgoing personality and unwavering confidence. She never backed down from a debate to speak her mind, especially if she saw injustice, and most definitely around the dinner table. Our dad thought she'd be a great lawyer. Dance for me would lead to pictures of me in poses and costumes I didn't always know how to explain when discovered by friends. 
I'd take up soccer for a while, but I quit once I made it to high school out of my lack of confidence, as well as height comparisons during the summer camp slash summer training the team had. I'd still find a place for myself, joining my school's Go Club, think the Chinese version of chess, so a bit dorkier than chess club, and cycling club. I thought I at least knew how to ride a bike. However, I, myself, could never master speaking my mind, many times coming up with the right responses and comebacks to classroom and cafeteria debates days after, in the shower or when unable to fall asleep at night. I hated, and still hate, confrontation. Again, being the same age as a sibling is a bit rough, in the sense that we are both figuring out what we are doing at the same time, while both of us are in college. We don't really have advice for each other because we don't know where our advice is taking us. At least, that's my sad excuse. The truth is, I know Isabel is going to be fine. While I attempt to come up with a realistic story about my future goals for family gatherings and talkative dental hygienists, She's been working hard in the field of social work she's been studying for, volunteering at a sexual assault hotline, working at a nearby community mental health center, and now currently taking shifts at an after-school Big Brothers and Big Sisters program for a local elementary school in Lawrence. Growing up, she would always say she hated people, such as when lines were too long somewhere or whenever some jerk cut her off while driving. Yet, her stories and actions say otherwise joking in Spanish with her coworkers at the breakfast place she worked at throughout high school, cheering on teammates no matter what place they were in, laughing when describing the kids she's been looking after. Hell, just when walking around with her when I visited her at KU last fall, she became fast friends with strangers also struggling up the many, many hills of the campus, rooting for them to keep climbing. She may hate people, but people love her. Even if she finds another path for herself or ends up on a different road, I know she'll figure it out, and likely make a connection or two on the way. She's funny, kind, and stubborn, in a good way. She says she isn't smart, but we can all learn something from her. I know I have. But she already knows this. After all, we can read each other's minds. But it wouldn't hurt to say it out loud every once in a while. That's going to do it for this episode of Something to Note. Just remember, it might be something big, it might be something brief, but there's always something to note in our everyday lives. Why not share it? I'm Ben Geezer. Thanks for listening.